Hafide and Aloha from Hawaii at the 13th Festival of Pacific Arts and Culture. I'm regional correspondent Tomas Manglonia reporting from Hawaii as we spent the past few days following Team Guam and Team NMI at the world's largest celebration of our people right here in Hawaii. First up, we bring you a look at the beginning of the ceremony and arrivals of the delegates. <laughs> The last group of delegates from Northern Marianas and Guam have arrived in Hawaii for Festback. It's Rhoda Weaver Antonelli Rosario's first time at the largest indigenous Pacific Islander celebration. We're really excited to be here in the Festback to, to showcase what Rhoda has and what the city may have to share with this other uh, islander, to share our knowledge and skill to, uh, to the next uh, generation that are coming up. That next generation includes 17-year-old dancer Alexandra Castro from Tanapag in Saipan. She said it was her first time to leave Saipan and fly on an airplane. Honestly, I feel very honored because I'm very in touch with my culture because of this experience and also because, you know, like it was my family before me and now I'm here and after them representing for so long, it's me. I hope that I can, you know, continue this legacy of my kids too. Raquel Ogden from Tinian shares that passion for her culture as one of the 60 dancers representing the NMI. The day has finally come. Um, it's very exciting for us to be here um, after the couple of months of countless hours and late night practices and blisters and you know um, all the hard work. We're finally happy to finally be here to showcase what we have um, put together. Aloha, half a day as we report from the 13th Festival of Pacific Arts and Culture in Hawaii. We got a chance to meet Guam and Sinai delegates as they arrived to the island. <laughs> Hawaii is set to host the 13th Fest Pack with more than 2,000 delegates from Pacific nations arriving this week. The Guam delegation chanted upon their arrival, marking the start of the cultural exchange at the world's largest gathering of indigenous Pacific Islanders. It's Martha Tenorio's first Fest Pack. The weaver from Telefofo hopes to help Guam shine on the global stage. You're here. Yay! Oh my God, we're so excited. It's going to be so amazing. Even on the plane over here, they recognized that there were all of our groups coming in from different island countries for Festback, and the energy even in the plane was so exciting. Everyone said, Viva, we're here. And uh, we can't wait to showcase all the talent and skills that Guam has. Guam Council on the Arts and Humanities Director Angie Taitagui shares the excitement. We just want to bring it on and show everybody that we do it, did it in 2016 and we're going to do it here in Hawaii. Performing artist Shannon McManus also just arrived ahead of the festival. We feel uh, just representing um, Wahan in the Marianas to be here in our larger Micronesia family, our larger family of Oceania. Um, we're so blessed, we feel honored, and we feel uh, ready to, to, to just show the beauty of our people. This is where you, you share about who we are, what we are.
prepared to introduce the nations, I want you to know we have never seen anything or experienced anything like this in Hawaii. Welcome back to another episode of CNMI Weekly and our special coverage of FESPAC 2024 in Hawaii. Here's more of our trip and coverage. that this will also motivate all of us to join action to 
take care of each other. And that's what I think uh, it is going to do. That's what I'm hoping. kind of feels like we're all coming together and you know celebrating one another it's very powerful I think that we have to be here to be visible for our people and to you know have stories to tell and just make friends with like everyone else. I mean, it's great to be here and see our Chamorro people. I, I feel like there's, I've never been prouder to be Pacific Islander, you know, to see like all of these Pacific Island nations come together. It's this massive coalition of like Pacific Islander pride and I felt very overwhelmed. And so I feel super proud. It's the sound of carvers from across the Pacific working under one tent outside the Bishop Museum in Hawaii. Each nation at the 13th Festival of Pacific Arts and Culture carefully cuts and shapes their pieces. We're tasked to carve a 14-foot long uh, steering paddle for the double hawk canoe. For NMI carvers Tyler and Albert, it's a first-time experience for them at the world's largest celebration of indigenous Pacific Islanders and something they've been working toward for a long time. It's so exciting to be here, especially my first time here in Hawaii. So uh, I've been seeing uh, different kind of people, learning uh, different kind of things from the other countries. So it's good. It's an opportunity for me to learn more. I feel awesome being around all the carvers and uh, learning from them, talking with them, eating with them, uh, sleeping with them. So we're staying here together also and it's a one of a kind experience and I'm very grateful and honored to be here to represent Saipan. It's an experience that Guam carver Robert Taichino Jr. carries on from his late father. My dad, the master, just passed 2022. so. We're just reviving the culture, you know. I'm just filling in his spot and, you know, it's, it's fun to represent Guam. It's all, everybody collaborating and then, you know, all working together. Right now it's been all positive vibes ever since we got here and that's how we like to keep it, you know. And then, you know, you could uh, collaborate all your art together and learn some things too. And we continue our special episode of CNMI Weekly from FestPak 2024 in Hawaii. Here's more of what Team CNMI and Team Guam are up to. <laughs> KUAM first met these dancers in May during their practice on Saipan. Now the Northern Mariana Islands delegation is on the big stage at FESPAC in Hawaii, performing for crowds in the center of Waikiki and various other venues since the celebration began. It feels really amazing just because um, it's my first time in a really big um, country and majority of my dancers too. This is their first time to, so to have the same experience as them is like a really um, there, there's no um, word that can explain how I feel and how they feel because we're both actually experiencing the same thing. They're performing at the largest gathering of indigenous Pacific Islanders, joining a long lineup of dancers showing the movements of the Pacific every day of the festival. I feel like we finally settled into a groove um, the first performances were really intimidating, especially going on after so many other nations had presented what they had prepared. Um, but now that we've been performing every day for a few days around Waikiki and uh, Honolulu, I think we're finding our, our stride. And now we can really let loose and enjoy ourselves, relax a little bit, and just really listen, finally listen to the words instead of just doing the motions. About 60 Chamorro and Carolinian dancers are part of the NMI's 100 delegates.
Thank you so much to everyone who took time to speak with us. We'll have more from FestPack 2024 right after this. Welcome back to another episode of CNMI Weekly and our special coverage of FestPack 2024 in Hawaii. Here's more of our trip and coverage. The Northern Marianas Humanities Council and Humanities Guahan officially inked an MOU with the America Samoa Humanities Council and Hawaii Council for the Humanities, forming the Pacific Islands Humanities Network at a regional meeting amid the 13th FESPAC in Hawaii. Shelley Lowe is the chair of the National Endowment for the Humanities. And we are just really excited to be able to provide new funding to these councils for convenings and technical assistance and to create a regional cultural network and forum. Deputy Assistant to the President and AANHPI Senior Liaison, Erica Moritsugu, echoed that sentiment from the White House. The Biden-Harris administration also understands that culture is the backbone of our societies and we continue to promote, celebrate, preserve, and to uplift our own Pacific heritage as we deepen our cooperation with our Pacific Island partners. The MOU includes four overall goals, foster a culture of knowledge sharing and collaboration, amplify Pacific Islander community voices and perspectives, especially as it pertains to cultural protection and climate resilience, facilitate humanities capacity building and professional development, and strengthen community engagement and outreach. The Northern Marianas Humanities Council and Humanities Guahan shared their comments on a panel before the signing. We always talked about wanting this network to elevate Pacific Island voices and you know uh, your work to put this together and other events for us here in Hawaii and FESPAC has really helped us to do that. Yeah, I think something I challenge uh, the agencies and those here to do is to think about ways um, to make it accessible for us, to make it accessible for others. Off a day, hello everyone, aloha from Hawaii, we're in the Kualoa area with 500 sales at the 13th Festival of Pacific Arts and Culture. 
KUAM News reported live from the Pacific Ocean at FESPAC's traditional voyaging festival over the weekend. We joined 500 sails, all-female crew as they brought four canoes from Saipan to the event. Crew member Marjorie Atalik Daria is from Tinian. Um, we have Kelu in the distance, who is made out of a red, which is what's made out of a redwood log. She's also done in the Chamorro design. We have Iladahau, who's not here on the sail in the waters right now. And we have Nikayela, which is the Carolinian canoe, sailed by the guidance of master navigator Mario Benito. And we have Auntie Oba under Andrea Carr's guidance. Daria was joined by Magas Andrea Carr and other crew members April Rapecki, Sofia Perez, Jenny Chia, with delegates Francesca de Oro and Eva Ugan Cruz at the traditional canoes opening ceremony at the start of FESPAC. I think we made history. You know, this is the first time Zina and I has joined FESPAC um, with, an all with canoes, uh, for one thing, and then to have a canoe dedicated to a female, to an all-female crew, I think is historic. So it's, it's been amazing. You know, we were the first to land and arrive onto Hawaii's uh, shores. KUAM spoke to some of those history-making crew members. I feel that we're not just representing the Famalawan of the CNMI, but we're also representing the Marianas. We're representing Hawaii. I had so many Hawaiian ladies come and uh, give their support, encouragement, and how much they are proud of us for being here as females. And so I really feel that we're, we're not just a small CNMI representation, but we are representing um, half of the population of the earth. I think it's important because when I think about how isolated each of our island nations are, it's the canoes that bring us together, you know, and that just traces back to thousands of years ago. It took a lot of uh, work from a lot of different people to get us here. Master Navigator Mario Benito said it's an honor to bring a Carolinian canoe to join the celebration. Sailing with the uh, the uh, uh, flying proa together, <laughs> we're, we're showing people that we're, you know, like one family. We're uh, seafarers from Micronesia. It doesn't matter if you're, you know, like from Tufalu or or from Guam or Iyap, we have the same uh, interest, you know, like in, in sea bearings. And, and that's why, you know, like I, I really want to do this for the, the uh, young generation to, to learn. The event made history in more ways than one. Just to be amongst all these different canoes, um, the organizer was just saying that she thinks this may have been the most canoes that have been here in over 100 years at one time. Thank you so much for joining us on this special episode of CNMI Weekly from Hawaii. I'm Tomas Manglonia. We'll see you right here, same time, different place, next week.